The top 5% of PSLE students, if I ask every year the PSLE results come out, and I take the top 5%, and I ask, from which schools do they come from? If somebody said, well, 50% of them come from the top 10 schools, it may not be so surprising, right? Somebody said, well, maybe the top 80% come from 20 schools. The top 5% of PSLE students come from 95% of primary schools across all socioeconomic backgrounds. Let me flip it around. Every primary school, just name any primary school in Singapore in your neighbourhood, will have at least 10 students who have scored in the top one-third of the PSLE cohort. So when Irene, Ms. Irene mentioned her story, I was not surprised. You'll be able to find a top student within the top third in any primary school, not one or two, at least 10. Coupled with merit-based entry into secondary schools, it means that every student has a good chance of success, regardless of which school he goes to. When we look specifically at students who start from the lower socioeconomic groups, so I'm flipping it again and saying, all right, let's look at those who start, who have lived in one to three room flats, and let's track them. Madam Halima Yaakob asks, do we track? And this indeed we do. We track it very closely. If you take students who started in the bottom one-third by socioeconomic groups, and I've produced a chart, these are students who are in the bottom third by socioeconomic status, and you ask them, how do they do? Track them and say, how do they do at PSLE? Half of the students from the bottom one-third by socioeconomic background score within the top two-thirds in the PSLE. One in six of this group scores within the top one-third. More importantly, these figures, if you look at the trend curve, it's over 10 years. It's been steady, it's been sustained, even though that bottom one-third may be different. Let me explain in the next, next point. If we look now at those who live in the one to three room HDB flats at primary one, we find that one in five of these students score in the top third in the PSLE. And the same proportion, one in five, score within the top one third of every O and A level cohorts. So if you take a child in one to three rooms who stays there, about half eventually progress to our universities and polytechnics. And more importantly, as I said, these outcomes have remained unchanged since the 80s. From the 1980s, we've tracked it, even though the proportion in one to three room flats has been coming down. This is as if you had a football team that's more, football league that's more organized. A division, B division, C division, the weakest. And your C division has become smaller because A, B, and B division are more organized, but yet players from C division are still able to move up to A, B division, even though C division is coming down. In 1980s, almost 60% of our primary one students live in one to three room flats. So if you had stories about people who lived then and rising, you would say, well, 60% of you did so. This fell to 30% in 1995, and yet still half of those children progressed to polytechnics and universities. The proportion living to one to three room flats is 15% in the 205 primary one cohort. And yet still about half did well, as the numbers show. 